Uh, welcome to High Point Historical Society's educational programs. My name is Van Trivet, and I welcome you on behalf of the High Point Historical Society and the High Point Museum. The High Point Historical Society collects, preserves, and showcases the history of Greater High Point to foster a shared appreciation of our community reflected in the stories, events, and traditions of our past. We extend our invitation for you to join our organization. Today we welcome our presenter, Dr. Bennington. Um, Dr. Bennington is a native of Virginia who joined the faculty of High Point College, now High Point University, back in August of 1974. He earned a bachelor's degree in economics and business and business Emory and Henry College, the Master of Business Administration from Virginia Tech. Following three years of teaching at Averett College, now Averett University in Danville, Virginia. He earned a doctorate in business education from the University of Georgia. At the University of Georgia, he was awarded the Outstanding Graduate Re Research Award by, De by Delta Phi Epsilon Professional Fraternity in Business Education. He came to High Point College, High Point University in 1974, where over time he has served as the Professor of Business, Chair of the Earl N. Phillips School of Business, Director of Home Furnishing Marketing Program, and the Paul Broyhill Professor of Home Furnishings. He has been awarded the Meredith Clark Slane Outstanding Teacher Teaching Service Award, and this is historically High Point University's most prestigious faculty award. He is the author of the book, Furniture Marketing from Product Development to Distribution, published by Fairchild Books, New York City, and The High Point University and Furniture Industry, published by the History Press, Charleston, South Carolina. He has traveled extensively throughout the furniture industry in the United States and has spoken and done projects within the industry, both in the United States and abroad. Dr. Bennington, as we said, is author of the High Point University and Furniture Industry book, um, we are selling this book in our uh, museum store, so please come by and pick one up. And he will present to us today the history of this dynamic partnership between High Point University and the furniture industry by sharing stories that illustrate the impact that real world exposure has had on the students and the industry. Dr. Bennington, thank you, and we welcome you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here today. I didn't realize we were going to have people uh, out there, not everybody here, but uh, that's great. I'm glad you're here. I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started with the furniture industry. Uh, my grandfather had, I didn't put this as a slide, I should have, but uh, uh, my grandfather had a retail furniture store in Mountain City, Tennessee. And we lived about 40 miles from there, and so quite often we'd go over there. and. Uh, it was a great thrill to me to go there. I'd go next door to the private grocery store, and I'd go to candy, and I'd go over there and listen to my grandfather play music because he was quite the comfort pianist. And in the summertime, when there weren't any customers in the store, he would get the piano, which was in the window, and play. And pretty soon, people would start drifting into the store. I guess it's all that furniture market. So that's, uh, that's my, that's so I've got a lot of, good uh, feelings about the furniture industry. As I said, we, I got here in 1974. It was kind of an interesting trip because I was driving a U-Haul truck from Athens, Georgia to High Point, North Carolina. And it was the day that President Nixon resigned. So I had the, the radio on in the truck and it was nonstop news, you know. Richard Nixon went here, Gerald Ford went here, and so on, all the way up the road. And finally, what happened was when I left Athens, Richard Nixon was president, and when I got to High Point, North Carolina, Gerald Ford was president. And I moved into a rental house that was owned by High Point University. And uh, we, uh, my wife and I had a, uh, a good time because we were right there on campus in a way. Oh, something's happening to my microphone. microphone has fallen. Oh, dear. So we're going to adjust it. Okay, good. 
Okay. I think you can hear it a little better. Okay, I can't even say okay. There you go. I think that'll work better. Okay, great. So, anyway. Okay, that's a, what you call a technical difficulty. Here, so. so, here we are. But anyway, came into High Point and um, saw the big building and so on, and I started to figure out, now, what in the world is happening here at High Point? I've heard that High Point has, is one of the furniture cities of the world, if not the furniture city of the world. Uh, people up in Grand Rapids, Michigan would probably argue with that, but uh, it's certainly a big thing around here. So i uh, got to know a little bit about it, and um, I taught general business, and I got to know people like Charles Hayworth, Charles Hayworth Jr. And Mr. Hayworth was chairman of the Board of Trustees of High Point University. There were a number of other people on the board, uh, Mr. George E. Rath, who had, was in the veneer business, and just a bunch of other folks we could talk about that had a lot to do with with later what happened at High Point University. So it was just a, a wonderful thing to get to know them, and I'd had such a warm experience eating candy in my grandfather's store that I thought, well, this will be good. So uh, talking about an extraordinary relationship between town and gowns. Town being the city, being the furniture industry in this particular situation, gown being the college or university. Historically, that's been two separate things. You've had the gown part, you know, students would go to class, they'd socialize with their people, their fraternity brothers or sorority sisters or whoever. And then the town would have their industries and everything that they had in town, but it never really mixed. So this is an interesting partnership that started in High Point, North Carolina. Now let's look talk a little bit about the, if I get this to work, We'll talk about the furniture industry. All right, if you think about the furniture industry in the United States, it's historically been, uh, well, whoops, I'm just, I hit the wrong thing. Wait a minute, gotta go back, gotta go back, gotta go back. There it is. Okay, well, anyway, uh, if I try to do the pointer, I'll point outside. But anyway, so here, right down here is where we are. Uh, furniture came ashore from, Europe, up here, in New England, and later on it came down here, Virginia, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and so on, because in this area is where we had all the raw materials. The Appalachian Mountains had some very, very good furniture woods. Now, the northern people went this way, and they came up here in Michigan, and I don't see any uh, mountains up there, but they, uh, they were quite happy with what, you know, you know, Grand Rapids, Michigan was proud of what they did, and there was a lot of others up there. And they kind of uh, sloughed off on the southern manufacturers. That's where the term case goods came from. Because uh, in the furniture industry, you have different categories of products that people talk about. One is upholstered furniture, which is, of course, sofas and chairs and so on with fabric on them. But also, we have case goods, and that's a suite or suit of furniture that's correlated, and it has a case piece in it. The case piece is what it holds things. But they, they laughed, these people up here, they laughed and said, well, the reason it's called case goods is because the Appalachian Southern furniture is so cheesy, it won't hold it together. And they ship it in wooden cases, they just hold it together, that's, that's what it takes. So, but that's not really true, that's just, a, that's just a story that you hear that was kind of a uh, back and forth between the northern guys, the southern guys. So anyway, so here we are right here, you know, uh, and it's just a good thing. A couple of good things. One is the railroad. The railroad came right through here. Uh, we're the high point, you know, we got the name because we're the highest point on the railroad. And there's people keep talking about, you know, which particular part of the railroad we're talking about, between here, here, whatever, but it was just the high point. So. That's what I've been able to get out of it. All right, so now let's see, let's try to change. Okay, all right, here is a map of High Point, North Carolina. You see, you got this, the uh, railroad. We're both, no, right here it is, right here at the railroad. Going right down through town. All right, right to here, and this, if you read the, the 
lettering here, it says it's the furniture capital of the world. I mean, not the manufacturing, what do they call it? Manufacturing center of the South, that's it. So we had, and if you look at all this, the names of these companies, there's some casket manufacturers and there's some buggy manufacturers, and there's all sorts of different things, but most of them are furniture companies. And you see they have drawn little, little pieces of smoke coming out of the chimneys at the factory. And um, there's, uh, and so really we had a manufacturing area. And um, this was 1912. And it shows you a pretty good idea of what it was. Well, about the same time, they uh, started thinking about, you know, how are we going to sell this furniture? And so a lot of the Southern manufacturers uh, built showrooms on their factory and invited the uh, people to come down, get on the train and get off in the middle of High Point and buy, the 1910s, you know, this 1912, somewhere along there, they, uh, they decided they were going to build themselves a building. Because before that, the buyers had to go to the factory. They had a room in the factory where they'd show their tables or their chairs or whatever. So they built this building. I think it's about, whoops, I did it again. Uh, they built this building. I've got the, I've got to put glasses on so I can see them. Uh, in 1909, uh, this was called the Southern Furniture Exposition Building. And this was a big showroom building. And it's still right down there in the middle of High Point. It's still the same, still the same location. And you can see that the, here we have the Model T and Model A Ford cars, or whatever brand you got. Uh, and so by, 19, by the middle 1920s, this was full. And so um, the buyers liked that, although the market lasted for up until um, the 19, early 1970s as being 150 miles long. It started on Burlington, the east, and went to Hickory in the north and the west. So you had, up in the west, you had, you really did have a, uh, and this is when I started learning about it, because they still did this. You had the Hickory Market Center. There, it was a smaller building, but it had a lot of people like Roy Hill and so on in that building. Uh, now, Roy, um, Roy Hill may have had their own uh, factory showroom. I know a lot of them did. And as you came up the road, you came to uh, uh, places like Lexington, and you had things like Dixie Furniture, which they now changed to Lexington Furniture, uh, the name Lexington Furniture, but they had a nice showroom right on the back of their plant in Lexington. Uh, Thomasville Furniture Industries, they had a plant, uh, showroom, and so on. And some of them lasted a long time, some of them didn't. So, and there was jokes at that time that said that uh, the buyers, what they did was they would uh, go over at Hickory and stay, and while other buyers were in High Point, and then they would change rooms. So they could, one group shop this end first, the other group shop the other end first. Four markets a year. And so it was, you know, spring, fall, winter, and summer. And so uh, uh, it was that way up until the 70s. But then, you know, four was a bit much. Uh, when it all started, the winter and summer markets were the, the big markets. But later on, uh, it changed. It was the other way. It was changed, and so we ended up with a uh, spring and fall market. Spring market has always been bigger because that's when people are... Uh, buying for the fourth quarter because historically you sell more furniture for the holiday when people are going to come to the holidays you might uh say it's your christmas present you know whatever it is but that 
typically is what you find. So now, so we have the furniture manufacturing centers here and the furniture marketing centers here. Now let's talk a little bit about High Point College. Let's see, whoops, let me just see. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. High Point College. High Point College was uh, established in the early 1920s. Well, what had happened was, oops, let me go here. Uh, what happened was that uh, before this, the Methodist Church had some colleges. Like, for example, they had a college called Yankton College, which is in Davy County, up the other side of Boxville somewhere. I think there's a historical marker up there, but I haven't seen it. But anyway, they, the reason they wanted to have their, their uh, colleges in the uh, uh, faraway places like that was to keep the students free from sin. You know, to keep them out of temptation and all that sort of thing. So you put them out. The problem is, the students didn't want to go out there. So the enrollment wasn't very good. So what happened was they decided, well, we have to have a uh, college in the Winston-Salem, Greensboro, Burlington, High Point area. So uh, there was a number of people who uh, died for this. And, but High Point had this little guy right here, Reverend Joseph McCulloch. He was like the Energizer Bunny of those days. He just wouldn't shut up. Come here, come here, come here, come here. He had a magazine. He kept writing about the light would be greater here than anywhere else. So in 1920, they finally, the Methodists finally voted to put a college in High Point, North Carolina. Uh, High Point, they gave them $100,000 and 60 acres of land to have it. So in 1924, we had High Point College that was established. So now we have a college and we have the furniture industry. Now for many, many years, they kind of were separate entities. Town and gown would look like the town and gown of any other uh, place you might find. So one of the things, uh, so let's, you know, we went along, we had the Great Depression, and the only thing I could say about that was that there was not very much demand for furniture, product. You didn't have to have furniture, you could fix what you had, and so on. But then we had World War II. And I didn't put everything up here that I could have put up here, but, but you have a situation where the college, High Point College, trained the Army Air Corps. Well, they didn't need the training, but they had the facility. So, you see, they used, I assume they, they stayed in the dormitories and so on, over here. So, you can see there that they're out in front of Roberts Hall. This is the administration building, the field administration building at High Point University now. But you can see that they were doing training. At the same time, the furniture industry uh, was preparing things for the military. Uh, the, uh, here's an interesting picture. This is Thomasville Furniture. What they did was they made a lot of wooden products for the uh, armed services. These are rolling pins, big old rolling pins for making, for cooking, where you have cooking for a lot of troops, maybe, uh, in a, on one of the army bases or whatever. So here, this, this lady is very excited about the fact that they're turning out these, these uh, uh, rolling pins. The Southern Furniture Exposition Building, I showed you a while ago, they decided to use it for a records depository. The Department of Defense decided that they would they, they were trying to figure out where it, it would be less likely to be uh, bombed, I guess. And so they found that here's this big building with all these rooms in it in High Point, North Carolina. So they stored a lot of their Department of Defense, you can call it today, records. They were down there. Bassett Furniture was another one. They made troop carriers. The back, if you can imagine a truck, if you can show a little picture of an army an old army uh, scene in a movie, maybe. You saw the picture, you saw troops 
standing on the back of a truck, you know, holding on to a rack around there. So, you see, they made those. So we have all sorts of different things that some of these big companies have made for the military, but they didn't make furniture. Now, I don't have a slide but for that, but I left this out. But uh, one thing that we could say is next would be the post-war boom. Troops came back. There was a big need for housing. If you go to Greensboro and you go out Longdale, what, out Longdale, um, if you take a right into some of those neighborhoods right there, those are Sears kit homes. You can buy your house out of the Sears catalog. That's, that's what they did. They, uh, uh, they sold kits. It's like, you know, Sears, I remember when I came to High Point, uh, Sears was still downtown. And so uh, the lady would always uh, answer the phone, Sears Square America Shop. Well, they used to shop there, but apparently they don't shop at Sears anymore. They shop at uh, Amazon, I guess, on Amazon. But you see, but anyway, the, we kind of had a pause for World War II, but then it got it kicked on in the post-war uh, days. Well, about the same time, we have our first evidence of a real partnership between High Point College and the furniture industry. And that was, this was the uh, furniture coatings concentration. Uh, Dr. Cummings was uh, one of the faculty members. I'm not sure if he was the department head or not, but he, uh, his big thing was furniture coating. Varnishes, all that sort of thing, lacquers and so on. So he trained a lot of people to be finishing people in the furniture industry. He said, well, people, that's not the use word people too much, but these students right here, they may have gone to Thomasville or some other furniture company that needed a lot of uh, expertise in uh, how to apply. Uh, varnish or whatever. So that's another, that's kind of the first place time we have a partnership between High Point College and High Point and the furniture industry. All right? Now, all right, we start seeing some other things. That is, that, uh, I don't know why it keeps coming off. Oh, okay. I have an assistant. I shouldn't, I just make moving my arms, I shouldn't do that. There you go. Okay, well, okay. All right. So what we had was a situation where we have uh, this building right here built. This was the Wren Memorial Library. If you've driven around High Point, you know there's a Wren Street. Well, that was named for Mr. M. L. Wren. Well, when Mr. Wren died, his wife gave enough money for them to put his name on this particular building right here. It still stands. It's over, it's no longer the library because it's too small for that. But uh, uh, it's a, a nice building, it has nice architecture and so on to it. But they use it for offices now. But, uh, but this is the first time we have, we start seeing names. And people say, well, and this is going back a little bit with when I, Finally, when I first started writing this book, was I was thinking about stepping back a little bit and teaching fewer classes, and I did because I wanted to uh, be a part of my grandchildren's lives and so on. So I could, I was the, uh, uh, I don't know, the ax taxi driver, I guess you'd say, for my grandchildren for a while. Now they've grown up to the point where they don't be driving around. You know, I've got, got two granddaughters that 16 and 19, and and that I used to drive around, and, but now they have boyfriends with cars. So guess what? I, I'm out of the picture anymore. But anyway, all right, so we had, first time we had the Wren Memorial Library, and then another example is the Hayworth Memorial Chapel. 
Hayworth Memorial Chapel is named for Mr. Charles Hayworth Sr. Mr. Charles Hayworth Jr., when I came here, was the chair of the Board of Trustees of High Point University. And that's, I got to know Mr. Hayworth. I got to know High Point, uh, uh, you know, I got to know some of the people there and so on. All right, so let's go on here. Ah, okay, now this, I missed it. I missed one somewhere. Oh, here. I missed a slide here. Sorry, I went too fast. All right, but on the other hand, the market started growing. And the market, uh, when the market was first founded in the early 1920s, well, they showed before that in their showrooms, but they were a, uh, it was the high point market. And it was just for the region, regional. Uh, stores and so on. You had people from, you know, as far away as Charlotte, maybe something, and North Carolina towns, but not very far away. And so, whoops, this thing keeps, I'm not doing this right. But anyway, and um, so it was a regional market, and then it became a national market, which means that people came from further away. They came on the train, they, you know, by that time they were starting to get on airplanes and fly here and so on. And we had, this is from the 1960s. This is late 1960s and you can see how many showroom buildings they had. Because people didn't want to go out to Burlington. There was a, a company, I think it was called Burlington House Furniture uh, in Burlington, North Carolina. Or they didn't want to go up to Hickory or wherever. So we had all this product. Now this, right in here is where the, the center of the market still is. And you see it, so then it went from then the national market to the international market. You can see here the International Home Furnishing Center here. It certainly is uh, a lot bigger now and fancier and so on, but this is the main building and it, the front's still the same pretty much. But uh, now it's, uh, I didn't put another slide in there, but it's, bigger than this now. And so what you have is you have people coming from foreign countries to sell. You have people coming from foreign countries to buy. So it's now an international market. It's the international trade show. And so you have to, you have a lot of different kinds of people that are coming to look at furniture. It's more compact than it used to be, but for, it didn't go to Hickory, it came here. And I think one of the big reasons is the main North South Railroad that we had in here, and now the highways, interstate highways. So, but you can, and now we have a nice airport. And so, this is now an international market. So, now instead of being the SFEB, the Southern Furniture Expos Exposition Building, it's the International Home Furnishing Center, IHFC. And it's gotten to be a lot more organized than it was then. So that's, that's it. Now, I'm going to skip back over my, uh, and I apologize for doing this, but I uh, haven't learned to do this very good. All right, we, this goes back to the slide we already had. and We've got these, and um, it's interesting. Uh, at the time I came, um, Mr. Charles Hayworth was the chair of the Board of Trustees. Let's see, whoops, let's, let's get Let's stay here for a second. Uh, and so uh, he was real interested. And a lot of the other people that were interested, George Egrath was a big one that was very interested. Bob Gruenberg, who was the general manager of the IHFC, International Home Purchasing Center. Um, I, would just, I could name several if I had time to think. But these people decided we want something to happen that ties what High Point University is doing to our industry. So they came to me and I was delighted because I still remember my grandfather's store. And one of my uncles had a, a furniture parts business. He made all sorts of wooden parts for the furniture industry. So what they decided to do, we, um, 
he had me to come up with my ideas. Well, I came up with my ideas. And um, they said, son, you need more ideas. You need to clarify what you want to do. So what they did was they decided that I would go principally to Bassett for a semester. They hired a guy to teach my classes. And so they sent me to Bassett Furniture. And I went to some other places too, but primarily Bassett because they were the world's largest furniture manufacturer at that time to learn about the furniture business. And so, you see, I, I have a bad slide of the manufacturing, but I was, I was here. And um, then I uh, went through a factory from one end to the other, from what they call the rough end, which is where the logs come in and they start to cut the rough boards all the way through all the different steps, through the finishing and, you know, and the assembly and all that sort of thing. And then you, and finally it's finished and you send it out to whatever customer. So I got a chance to do that. Three months I did that. And I spent uh, a lot of time at Bassett. This is Bassett's showroom. It's now, if you go out to Business 85, this is Old Dominion Freight Line. At that time, that was Bassett's showroom, and it was a big showroom. You can see it. You know, had two, had uh, some showrooms in the basement, and all this whole building was showroom. It was very, very big. But uh, Thomasville had their own showroom. All these others. So, what I did was I went through with Bassett. I went through the whole product development process. I sat in on the uh, uh, planning where they decided, you know, they evaluated their product line that they'd been selling, talked about what had been selling, what wasn't been selling, what they needed to replace, and um, sat there with Mr. Charlie Bassett, <laughs> smiled just like I was one of their employees. And so, uh, so I got a chance to see firsthand what happened. So that was a really good Endeavor really. So then, what I did was I came back uh, with the furniture program on paper and started all these classes. And this was uh, this was good for me because I had had a chance to get out and do something specialized. One of the frustrations of teaching sometimes is that you teach so many general courses. You don't get to know anything about anything. So what I did, this is the first edition. I, whoops. Oh, well. No, 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 no. I've got to go back. There we go. See, there's one here you have to hit for the pointer, and one you hit, and two you hit for the, and my finger's too big or something. But, you know, one of the things that I did was uh, to bring realism into the classroom. And I wrote this book right here called Furniture Marketing. It was, uh, luckily, it was published by what's now Bloomberry in New York. It was Parashile Books at that time. And so, had that, and now it's in the second edition. You want to see the second edition, I brought a copy. But that was just bigger. Um, but that's one way of bringing realism into the classroom was the textbook, because I had a lot of real world examples, had a lot of guest speakers. Uh, I'll probably get teary out here to think about this, but one of my favorite guest speakers was a guy named Fred Starr. And uh, Mr. Starr was a good friend, but he was one of the first victims of COVID. He was, he was down in Florida and was unfortunately uh, ran into the germs on the way back and never made it back to High Point. So, you know, so anyway, but we had people like Fred, we had people like, uh, and I can remember him telling his students that you, you've got, you know, so many days, minutes, hours, whatever, uh, given by God, you better be on this earth and make some out of yourself, which was good, a good motivational sort of thing. But uh, I had a lot of other really good speakers that came. So that's another way of bringing realism. Another thing is field trips, you see. You can see that doesn't look like me very much, does it? Yeah. But anyway, that's me. <laughs> and uh, uh, this was just happens to be in the Furniture Discovery Center, which is something that I helped with 
when it was done, which was a kind of a, uh, I guess you say, a visitor center for people who wanted to know about furniture. And it was, it was good. It was good, but it really wasn't sustainable, I think, at the time. But anyway, but we went to, to all sorts of different factories. We went to the market. Uh, and one of the good things was that we were accepted. These people didn't say, no, you can't come in. They were glad for us to come. We went through the Thomasville Furniture factories. We went through other factories. Um, and we started with Silvercraft, which was a uh, upholstery company that was here in High Point. And we had a lot of other companies that uh, just let us come. And uh, had Davis Furniture still here. And we went to see uh, uh, office furniture being made and so on. All right. Now we have also added over the years, we have added some other kind of majors that are that fit with what we already had and of course interior design and they did this because a lot of their incoming students were saying we would like to study interior design they might get a minor in home furnishings marketing but they wanted to major in interior design so we've had a very good run with that in fact it was this is it's accredited by the council for interior design accreditation uh, we have a major in visual merchandising, which is really for people who want to do things like uh, design stores and to uh, showcase merchandise. Or and they also do things on computers. You know, how do you make your your uh, products look good on computers and so on? And we have a furniture sales concentration in the school of business that has to do with people who would like to be a furniture salesperson. So it's expanded a little bit and uh, it continues to evolve uh, from one place to another. So we have that. Now let's see if I can. All right, now let's talk about scholarships, endowments, awards, and so on. And here's just a couple examples. This gentleman right here is a Chinese gentleman that I learned a lot from. His name is Larry Mo was Larry Mo. He unfortunately smoked too much, so he developed lung cancer. But I, I didn't. I had heard of Mr. Mo. He left mainland China in 1939 with the clothes on his back, came to the United States, and he went back before he died, a multimillionaire. But it was. I was walking my dog one day, and my wife came running out, and she said. Somebody's on the phone from Singapore. I said, what is that all about? You know, there's a guy that wants to talk to you from Singapore. I said, well, I came back on the phone, and that was where I met Mr. Mo, by phone. And he, what he wanted to do was he wanted to establish a scholarship. Because <clears throat> he came to the United States and went to uh, Wharton School of Business and Finance, and he loved it. And it was really what he thought made him successful. So he won he tried at that school to put in a furniture major, but it was too specific for them. So they didn't do it. So they never and you know, so he couldn't help with that. <clears throat> so what he did was he made a ten year uh uh initial uh commitment. <clears throat> Where's my bottle of water? I need a bottle of water I don't know what I do with it. Oh she found my bottle of water. See, I was prepared. I just didn't put it. I didn't put it up here. I left it up there. I spilled it first, but you know, I had to clean it up. But Mr. Mo said he would give a student, he would start a student every year for 10 years, full ride scholarship, room, board, tuition, books, everything. And so he kept that going for 10 years. No, no. Can't remember exactly. It was several million dollars that it came out to be at the end. And after that, he named it for his wife because he was getting in bad health and so on. And now he passed away, and uh, uh, his son decided he'd rather keep the money in China, so we don't have that anymore. But that was an interesting thing because a lot of people 
not a full ride because they start first year, one student, second year, two students, three, you know. So you didn't just get it for one year, you got it for all four years. All right, another, I'll give you one more scholarship. I didn't put another picture up here, but um, they asked me, a lazy boy asked me if I would come to their annual meeting or semi-annual meeting at the furniture market. And I said, well, okay. So I found out that the reason they wanted me to come to the, uh, their, their meeting was that Mr. Norton, Pat Norton, who was their chair of the board, who was getting ready to retire. I don't know if he retired at that time or not. I don't think he had. But anyway, uh, what do you give a guy who has a lot of money for his 70th birthday? They gave a scholarship. They, between the, between the stores and they seemed like it was $120,000 or something they gave me a check for. So that's pretty good. Good on me to come back with a check for $120,000 or whatever. So, uh, so that's another one. Another one was Mr. Rawson Haverty uh, decided he was on the board of, of trustees for a while. Haverty's Furniture Company, the retail uh, chain out of uh, Atlanta, decided they'd like to have a uh, an award for the best student. So they established what they call the Haverty Cup for Excellence. And it's been going on for several years now. And it's the, in any of the furniture related majors, faculty gets together and selects somebody for the Haverty Cup. They get a check for, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars. Um, 17, 18, I don't know, 1,000, I don't know what, uh, 2,000, yeah, about $2,000. And their name is put on here, you know, like here, somebody named, let's, let's see this, Ashley Holleran, got that. You, I don't have a picture of her, but she is vice president of, uh, I'll think of the name of the company now, but she's, uh, she's doing very well for herself. Her, she's, Praxton is her married name. But uh, uh, Miles Talbot, that's what's, but uh, she, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. She lives in Boston because she got married and she doesn't want to live here anymore. But she, so she telecommutes and comes to uh, High Point whenever she needed. And she's the vice president of marketing. So it's kind of neat. But anyway, what now what happened? Okay, let's see. Let's go back. Okay. Now, Norton Hall. This was kind of an interesting uh, project. Uh, some of the people on the board of trustees and so on decided that, you know, maybe we ought to have a home for the furniture related courses. So they named it for Mr. Norton. The uh, Lazy Boy Company and Mr. Norton, Norton family and so on, made the lead gift. So it was named Norton Hall. Uh, here, and then every room in the building is named for something. This is the Bassett Library. We have the Broy Hill Lecture Room. We have a lot of different names. Even the, we've even got trailer bathrooms in that building. So what was, what's amazing to me is that that building was actually paid for because before the ground was ever broken. So that's the only time I've ever been really involved in fundraising, but it worked, which is good. So, you know, it's kind of neat. We, uh, we did a lot of things that kind of you probably wouldn't find somebody doing today, but there was a big house in Emerywood that had a really nice uh, library. So all of these uh, shelves and all this sort of thing, came out of that big house in Emerywood. That was just great, really. So, all right, now, proof is in the pudding. Let's talk about graduates, just a minute. We've had a number of graduates that have done a lot of interesting things. Uh, this particular th this person right here, uh, Eric Gatton, he's vice president of Lazy Boy Corporation. He's, uh, he's in charge of the whole Southeast part of that. And of course, you see, uh, he gets to you know, know people like Kristen Bell, the actress. They have a person uh, that is their 
what do they call it? I can't remember what they call it now, but they're spokesperson. You know, they have a fancier name than spokesperson, but but uh, it's been it's usually somebody from um, uh, the movies, somebody that people would know. So so that's who that is. That's not one of our graduates. That's Okay, here's a good example. Uh, this is, here's Randy Commissar, and here's her brother, Brad. They, their family had a retail store in Milwaukee. Well, they sent them down here to learn about the furniture business. And what they did was they, uh, they were pretty successful. They were good students. They went back, and what they did was they closed that store, moved it out to a more prosperous uh, suburb, and Randy was is now one of the top four. She's 39, so she's rated as one of the top uh, 40, under 40, in the furniture industry today. So they, they create a totally new thing. And here's another one for the interior design. This guy right here, Bill Lyon, he worked for a lady called, uh, during the market, she liked him really well. Uh, can't think of her name right now, but uh, anyway, he, she gave him a, choice, a chance to go up into Connecticut, work for her. So now he, is, he has his own business and he is doing really, really well. And here he's just working with a customer, but that's another example of somebody who's doing well. We can talk about lots of people that are, that are doing very well. All right. One of the things, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this book, other than everybody kept saying, why don't you write a book, why don't you write a book, why don't you write a book, was to really showcase the furniture name so that people who come to the campus if they see, like for example, this first one here, Hayworth Fine Arts Building, that they can, they are motivated to go on the inside and read the plaque and find out who that was. And so here's that, of course, Mr. Hayworth is, uh, has two buildings on campus. And this is kind of interesting. I, I, now, is the Hayworth name, it's kind of got a little, uh, shall we say publicity recently? Uh, Mr. Hayworth was president of Albert S. Company. And they had a number of others, Myrtle S. Company, they had Hayworth Rolling Panel, a bunch of different kinds of names there. Well, uh, Mr. Hayworth, Mr. Hayworth Sr. died early. And they had all these businesses going. And what happened was Mrs. Hayworth took over and she did a great job. She ran the factory. And she was inducted as last market into the Furniture Hall of Fame because she did so much to do that. But anyway, that's the Hayworth name. Webb Conference Center. Uh, Mark Webb here has a company that makes foam rubber up in uh, the Hickory, Lenore area. So that's another example of somebody who's done very, very well. That's he and his wife. And um, so, uh, um, it's another name. Right here, Culp. One of the things that we did was, um, we have quite a few things now named after Culp. Mr. Rob, Mr. Bob Culp, I got a chance to meet him, which was good, because he was a really, really nice guy. But uh, here's the Culp Planetarium. It's in the uh, Wannick building. I didn't put a picture of the Wannick building. Wannick Hall of Science here. But uh, if you ever get a chance to go to a uh, program there, they have a really good planetarium. But uh, there's another furniture related name. They were in the, the fabric business, you know, the Culp, Culp Fabric Company. And, Really where they made their uh, uh, mark is in mattress ticking. Because a lot of other uh, fabric today is made offshore, but you have to have such a fast turnaround that uh, they figured out how to do mattress ticking. And so they've done very well with that. And that's another field trip. We did that, all right? Let's talk a little bit about uh, 
High Point College and now High Point College, got to be High Point University and so on. Well, just to give you a little example, and I didn't uh, do a lot here in terms of, couldn't put all the different things, but I just highlight three presidents, these three presidents that I've worked under. In 1974, when I came here, Mr. Patton, Dr. Patton was the, uh, I said Mr. Patton, Dr. Patton was here. He was from business. He was here a long time. He was here 20 years or so. And his thing was, you know, to make High Point University pretty financially secure and invest good, invest well. And uh, what probably his best investment was what they call the magic uh, block downtown, which is uh, where Sears used to be. It's where Showplace is today, the Showplace store. So when I came here, that was the Sears store. And uh, well, they said Sears, where everybody shops. You know. We'd be in trouble today because we had any place to shop now, would we? If Sears was that, all right. So, so we had this, all right. So we had, uh, and so uh, had Dr. Martinson. The next one that I worked as, that uh, highlight here is Dr. Jacob Martinson. He was here 21 years. Uh, he was president of Brevard College in, up in the mountains, so he knew the ropes. He knew all the, the uh, uh, rules and regulations and so on. So his big um, thing, his big probably, if you want to uh, say what was his one big achievement, was to get Montlew Avenue rooted around campus. Up until then, there was a state highway that went through the campus. And if you want to go to uh, uh, the chapel, what did you have to do? You had to dodge cars. You want to go to a science class. And I remember one of the years that I was here, uh, some girl got hit by a car trying to get across the road down there. So, but he had that. He did a lot of things that uh, uh, he opened up Winston-Salem for night classes. Winston-Salem did not have any night classes. That time, so that was a void. So he started having night classes, and I remember I, I taught a general marketing class over there the first semester. And it was in we took over the Piedmont Airlines Training Center. Uh, you may not be familiar with the term Piedmont Airlines, but that was a big thing at that time. And uh, if you if you see a a McHenry, an O. Henry magazine. I think it's this month that's highlighted Piedmont Airlines, where it is. I picked up a copy, haven't read it yet. But, uh, but he did a lot of things to try to get us some money. We were, he was here at a kind of a time when there was a down and down slope and number of students available and so on. He's the guy that changed it from college to university. There was a little bit of a controversy to start out with about what we're gonna name it. We're gonna name it for this guy or this guy or whatever. But they decided to use, just to change it from High Point College to High Point University. And Dr. Martinson, his big thing was he was, he was very conservative, slow growth. Build one building at a time. Finish that building, get it paid for it, and do another one. Okay, then, he retired and Nita Covain came in. I met Nita when I first came and he was learning to speak. <laughs> he didn't say learning to speak, but he had a little office over on the other side of town and he had written a little book called, um, I don't know, I can't remember what the book now. But I gave it, I bought it and gave it, it's a little paperback book and I gave it to my mother and she liked it so much because it was for high school seniors that she wanted to buy one for everybody she knew. And so he came in, but the thing about Nito is, Dr. Clay, I should say, I just have known him for a long time, so I flip up and call him Nito. Um, but you see, is he threw out the book. You know, he went with the book, but he threw out the book. He talked, he for years had done sales training, and he was talking about thinking outside the box. Well, he not only thought outside the box, he threw the box away. And he didn't care how many projects he has going at one time. So that, so we have gone, and I can, I've got, I didn't make a slide because I didn't want to be a commercial for what's happening right now, but 
Uh, I do have, I can make a slide, I can show it to you. But uh, uh, it is much bigger. It's in terms of, it's gone from like 1,400 students to like almost 5,000 students. It's gone from like 60 acres of land to, I don't know, 200 acres, I don't know what it is. But it's, you know, I could, I could well, I've got it here somewhere um, on the back. But, but anyway, that's where it is right now. So we have, the market has gone from being uh, a local market or a regional market to a national market to a um, international market, so on. So we have that for now. All right, so now, okay, five minutes. Okay, good. One, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay. All right, the future's bright for a high point university and furniture industry partnership. And there's a lot of things, uh, reasons I say that is because of our graduates and what they've done. Now, I just, these are just two pictures of two graduates, but our graduates have made a mark. This guy is now president of, uh, his name is Russell Turner. He's president of a company called Russell Turner Holdings that has a lot of Ashley stores. Last year, he's the 79th on in the top 100 furniture uh, companies. And he was, in, here's Caitlin Thompson, now her name is Singh. I asked Caitlin one time, I said, uh, why'd you come to High Point? She said, because of the terrific High Point market. And so here we have the market bringing in students. We have students working the market. She worked the market every time. She has now gone out and she's now a guru, guru of uh, selling uh, online, online selling. And so she's, she's doing this. She's done it for a couple of companies now and no telling where she's going to end up. So she's marginal here. So there's two examples. So when I say the furniture, the future's bright for High Point University, uh, furniture industry partnership, it's because of people like this. So we have, and the furniture market hires a lot of our students. So we have that. Okay. Now, any questions? So, so uh, I don't know if I talked too much or not. No, okay. you didn't. Okay. All right. We thank you so much again, Dr. Bennington, for being with us and um, look forward to um, selling your book in the bookstore. So if anybody's interested in coming and getting it, and we, um, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And everybody be safe. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. I guess I got to do something here. I guess. Oh, that's the last one.